Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Omega Files. I'm your host, Dr. Freedom, and tonight... Are you okay, Phil? Yeah, I'm just adjusting my seat. Oh, okay. Tonight, we're on the last of our movie reviews for this year, and that will be the movie Congo from 1995, uh, starring Dylan Walsh, Laura Linney, and Ernie Hudson. And it was a movie that was based off a Michael Crichton book, but for some reason didn't get as good a treatment as the Jurassic Park series. Uh, let's go around and get hellos from everybody. Uh, we're a little bit short tonight, but what the heck. Hey, let's say, hey, let's say hello, Philip. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Harry? Beans one and all. And McNallage. Hello, books. Hello, whatever. Okay, so interesting movie. You know, like I said, a lot of really, really good characters in it, at least from what my point of view. But what the, the most amazing part of this thing, other than the animatronics by Stan Winston, was the fact, oh my God, Bruce Campbell's in a movie that's considered A-list. But <laughs> let's go around and get an opening thoughts from everyone. Let's start with Philip. Um, this is a movie that I, um, when I watched it the other day, I, I kind of realized I, I, I seen it when I was a, bit, a lot younger, and I totally forgot about it. But um, watching it again the other day, I found it overall... An interesting, um, an interesting look at um, a life of a gorilla, and um, also in it, it was it was an interesting movie. I can say that it was quite fun. Okay, Harry. It wasn't bad, but it was more of the, one of those. You got more visual effects than you do plot line type movies. At least that's the way I saw it. Okay, and McNallage. I, I loved the movie, and I didn't have high expectations of it at first because uh, I didn't like I didn't like very much the last two movies that we reviewed, but I really enjoyed this one, and I I really don't see why it gets so much hate uh, hate as it does apparently. Yeah, according to this, uh, yeah, according to what I've been reading, though the film was a box office hit, this is right off of the end on Wiki, and I, I've been running around. The critical reaction to the movie was negative. Um, a significant cause was the fact that the novel fans were ticked off because the all right, what happened was the gorillas in the movie were costume humans. Um, they were um, done by Stan Winston, same guy who brought us Terminator, Aliens. You know, various, various other, you know, creatures from across sci-fi movies. And, but the thing is, you know, I thought they did a really good job. What do you guys think of the gorillas in this movie? Let's start with Philip. Um, yeah, they are, I, I, I was having a bit of trouble working out whether they were uh, people in people in gorilla suits or whether they were actually real gorillas. I'm still undecided about that. But um, kudos goes to Amy for her uh, sterling performance. You want me to knock your socks off? Go on, tell me. All of them were costumed. No. All of them. You see the silverback, yeah, yeah the silverback and grayback uh, and, um, gorilla, and yeah. the gorilla are all on the endangered species list, and there's very few of them that are in captivity. So there's no way they could even get trained gorillas at this point, especially out on a location. So in order wow. to save money, and plus you didn't have to worry about the humane thing, they they you had Stan Winston create all the animatronics, puppeteering, and all that for the gorillas. Well, very convincing job then, because I was quite certain that they were real gorillas. Apart from the, um, shall we say, the, um, the the other ones that were very strange, well, the cannibalistic ones, they they came across a bit too human for my liking. But 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 the one but the one talk, the ones I'm directed at, it's Amy and the and the, and the um, and the real type ones that she um, she remained with at the end. I thought they were real. Oh, wow. We're getting that wind noise off your mic again, McNally. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. What did you think of the gorillas in this movie, Harry? You think pretty well done? They were amazing. I mean, I knew Sam, I know Sam Winston's work. I mean, I've seen enough Sam Winston movies to know the man does fantastic work. But still, it's hard to believe that you had a mixture of his work and in regular gorillas actually in the movie. I mean, it was just so well done, it's hard to believe. But as I said, the problem I have is that 
the plot line is just so what they had the plot line is just one that didn't so single-minded it just didn't work so well ah oh, okay all right what did, what did you think of uh, the gorillas I think they they were great and they couldn't be uh, made better even with CGI. CGI would make them look unnatural because uh, the human eye has the ability to see what is real and what is painted or computer generated or whatever. So I I think they look great, especially for when the, when they were made. Okay. Um, also, uh, there were a lot of very interesting characters in this movie. We had, uh, oh heck, like I said, we had Bruce, you know, a lot of interesting actors. You know, Dylan Walsh, uh, Bruce Campbell, Laura Linney, um, heck, Joe Don Baker. I remember Joe Don Baker from the Walking Tall movies back in the 70s. And he was in this one, and it's a big you know, A-list movie at the time. But, okay, let's let's throw a really out there question. Compared to Jurassic Park, I don't know, which one do you think, you know, even ground, or do you think Jurassic Park or this one, you know, on the plot line was, you know, better? Let's, let's start with Phil. Um, if you refer, if I'm, if I'm comparing it to Jurassic Park, uh, the plot line for uh, this movie was, for Congo, was it was fairly straightforward and simplistic. It was a case of a, a journey over to discover a new race of apes, uh, whereas Jurassic Park is is more of a, a monster mash, you know, run away from uh, hungry creatures. Uh, so, so yeah, um, it, it, there's a, there's a slight um, um, difference in in the two stories. I I do like the Amy um, the um, Congo story, but Jurassic Park will, will win over. Over, uh, over. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Over quality in, um, you know, um, in how they put it out. If you know what I mean. Okay, I told the story better. Yeah. Okay, Harry. I thought, setting-wise, Congo came across a lot better than Jurassic. As far as visual effects, both were top-notch with the visual effects, but plotline-wise. I'd have to give a little bit, I'd have to basically call them both top toss-ups because you've got apes, which we know are realistic. We've got genetically recreated dinosaurs. It's, I mean, it's hard to tell which is more of a believable plot line, Jurassic Park or Congo. Okay. Um, acknowledge. Uh, well, Jurassic Park is a classic and I think it, it, it's better than Congo but I won't comment any more about it because uh, I haven't seen Jurassic Park in a while so uh, I, I don't know what to say about um, I think Jurassic Park is better that's okay a lot of people did a lot of people agree with you that Jurassic Park was far better yeah. Okay, now the big question. Uh, what were your favorite characters in this movie? Let's start with McNollage. Uh, I really liked the... Uh, what was he called? Uh, the, the white hunter that happens to be black. That was... Oh, uh, Captain Monroe, played by Ernie Hudson. Uh, yes. I mean, he's like he's like a streamer. You have to think, what a guy. But for some reason, I also like the uh, Romanian guy, Komolka. I don't know why, but I did. And also, Karen is uh, a great character, a, a strong female character, but uh, but not in a way that it's of Putin, she is. Uh, I know. I just like how her character is handled. 
Okay, I'm glad you brought that character up. Uh, uh, well, I keep mispronouncing his name, Kamoka. But, um, because he was played by Tim Curry, and there's a guy I forgot to mention right there, and here he is. Yeah. And, you know, we know Tim Curry from, oh, God, a whole gallery of movies from across the year. Cool. Not just movies, too. Okay. You know, I, I have to say Ernie Hudson's character is my, one of my personal favorites, along with Tim Curry. I mean, those are two I recognize the most because Ernie I knew from Ghostbusters. Yep, Winston Zedmore. Yeah, and Tim Curry I know not only from movies but also from voiceover work he's done on TV shows and such. Man, is a very talented actor here when he gets a chance to do a role. Yeah. Oh, okay. Philip? Well, yeah, um, my favorite character was indeed... Um, now, who's the black guy? Um, I know, I'm, I recognize his face, but I can't remember his name. He, he had the, he had the um, English accent, which is kind of weird for him, actually. I can't remember his name, though. I can't remember his name. But the, the, the black guy, the, one of the main character black guys, uh, he, he was quite a good character. And Tim Curry, he, which I've, I've loved since um, um, watching him from the... Um, what's that famous movie he was in where he's wearing suspenders and things? Oh, the Rocky Horror Show. So, yes. I liked him in that. All right. Uh, what did you guys make of um, Amy herself, who seemed to be one of the main characters, who, by the way, was played by a couple of different people in a suit? Let's start with Philip. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Like I said, I, I could have sworn it was a real um, a real gorilla. And as it, if it is an actor in it, that actor done a good job. Done a very good job. So, yes. Okay, Harry? Whoever did Amy did a fantastic job. They should have gotten an Oscar nomination because to do that role, not only as a gorilla, but as a pos as a gorilla who could possibly learn to do sign language, that's Oscar, that's Oscar consideration as far as I'm concerned. Okay, big knowledge? Uh, I like her, but uh, the, the thing that's bugging me about her, why why does she have only one one glove? Doesn't she need two arms to communicate? Uh, I think it was just the way that particular um, armature was set up, so you could just use one hand. Uh -huh. I don't know what to say about her. I, I, I mean... Okay. She doesn't get really some build-up as a character. I mean, she's a talking gorilla. All right. Okay. Um, what were your favorite parts of this particular movie? Let's start with Philip. Favorite parts? I think when we uh, finally revealed the um, the cannibalistic apes and, and, and the battle that ensued between them and the humans, and then obviously when the volcano started erupting and the apes are trying to escape the lava flow. That was that was exciting for me. Okay, Harry? My favorite part is when our lead lady he basically gives Joe Dobb Baker the finger by shooting the laser and destroying the satellite. Okay, make knowledge? I, I like the humor in it because it was a light-hearted movie even though it had some blood and some really gruesome scenes but the, the humor made it light-hearted and I liked some jokes like uh, when uh, uh, when uh, they uh, when they tell the professor the doctor what uh, he called uh, Dial Dylan Wash. Yes, uh, to uh, to not run away, and then he's all sweating and scared, and then he looks around and yes, uh, he asks, "What did you do?" And uh, 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 and Captain Kelly says, "I ran away." I thought that was funny. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. The part yes. where yeah, confronting the gorilla. Yeah, and he's in yeah, uh, Dylan Walsh's character, the professor. He's the only one still standing, or everyone else is all hiding in the brush. Yes. 
<laughs> also, also, that scene with the with the gorilla mating call. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that bit. Okay. Oh yeah, there was a scene when they're out in the middle of the jungle, and they're all the monkeys are waking them up, and. Yeah, Monroe Kelly explains to him, yeah, it's mating season, and every monkey within 200 miles thinks he's Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, then, is, oh, go ahead, McDonald's. And then uh, Walsh goes, ah, ah, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I love that part, too. Okay, joining us a bit late, Nightwing. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Sorry for jumping in a bit late. That's okay. It happens to everybody every now and then. Uh, what did you think of the movie Congo yourself? What was your opening thoughts on it? Um, for a movie I've not seen, I thought it was actually pretty good. And you know, some most of the characters were given uh, like a little bit of backstory before then, before this, which I found quite interesting. Like. You know, it was it was good, but it's just a shame that uh, it was a bit of a uh, flop. Just well, it, it, it did triple its money at the box office, but it got some really bad critical reactions. Um, when I was looking on, Wik I just looked on Wikipedia now, but like uh, the thing, um, it, apparently they were nominated for like quite a lot of bad awards. Yeah, we, we went over that really quick. Um, what happened was uh, the, the major part of the negative response was the fact that there was a lot of stuff that was in the book that was not put into the movie. Ah, oh, okay, uh, yeah. You see, like, one of the things that had been left out was the fact that there was supposed to be an opposing team that was racing to get to the site before they did, and that was all taken out from, from the book. Uh, that made a lot of the folks who read the novel angry. So that's why a lot of the negative reaction. Um, what was your favorite character from this movie? Uh, I like I like the gorilla, Amy. Oh, you like Amy? Yeah. yeah. Can you name what Amy? Soft. Can you name what Amy's favorite drink was? Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got about that. Yeah, go on. Come on, Amy. Hey. Uh, um. No, no, no. Okay, Philip, you go ahead. I'm, I'm, sure it was, I'm sure it was a tequila. Nope. No, a martini. A martini, okay, well, yeah, okay. You, you go ahead, McDonald's. What, what was it? A martini. Yep, that was it. The green drop drink. The martini <laughs> and olive. Because <laughs> <laughs> that led to one of my favorite parts of the movie, uh, where um, they're sitting there, and you know, Amy downs the martini, and they'll them. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're just discussing favorite parts. What was your favorite part of the movie, Nightwing? Um, I like all of it. I I don't really have a favorite part. Oh, really? Yeah, it was all. Right. It most it was all right. Most of it. Okay. Sure, there wasn't a particular scene or anything like that you like. Um. It was a uh, again from like last week. I wasn't again. I wasn't paying that much attention because I was a bit of a rush. Did you watch the movie? I did watch the movie. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. You, you can't use your, yeah. You can't use your Cheerios as an excuse. I wasn't eating Cheerios last time. I was eating my normal lunch. Okay. You know what that was. Okay. <laughs> 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 and you know me, Dr. Freedom. I, you send me something to either watch or listen to, I take care of it. I know, man. I know. Okay, um, we were comparing this one to, like, since it was a Michael Crichton novel, and that's the only other bit you missed, to, like, uh, Jurassic Park. How would you how do you think this would fare plot-wise? The plot of this movie versus the plot of Jurassic Park. Um... Well, one it had dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, and the other had this one has gorillas. That that's it. it both were very good, but I I still prefer Jurassic Park. Oh, okay, that don't worry. That was the general consensus anyway. As a matter of fact, like I said, a lot of the fans agree with you. 
Um, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, this movie, even though it made three times what it was supposed to, was, you know, considered to be a flop because of the way its critical reaction was taken. Um, it, it, yeah, like I, it got nominated for a ton of Raspberry Awards. And, <laughs> That's like, not sure thing. Yeah, it did not do all that well. Like I said, this is a classic example, and then, you know, this is one of the reasons I picked this movie. It's a classic example of a movie that had a big budget, it had a lot of great special effects, had a good story based off a Michael Crichton novel, made three times what the budget was, yet for some reason nobody even remembers it. It just dropped off the radar, it seems, after it came out in 95. Um, I don't know. What do you think would have made this movie better? What do you think would have made this movie more memorable? What do you think would have made this movie, you know, stick out more? If you could improve this movie in some way to make it stand out like Jurassic Park, what would you have thrown in? You know, just off the top of your head. Let's start with. Sorry, I said. Huh? What was that? Uh, if there was anything you could do to say make this movie better, look. Matter of fact, let's go way on the limb. Let's say you're going to remake this movie. And you wanted to compete, say, on the grounds of Jurassic Park. What would you throw in to make it a little better, make it more memorable? Ooh, that's a, that's a difficult one. On the on the um, on the pretense of what, what what the film had in the first place, um, I don't know because to me it didn't need that much of an upgrade apart from obviously being brought forward up to date, being updated in a more you know, this time around. But the story-wise, it did, the, the story itself didn't need to be um, upgraded for me. But uh, you know, effects-wise, of course, for the um, the gorillas and the um, the volcano eruptions and all that, that that could be touched up a little bit. But the story could stay the same. Okay, Harry. Two things I can think of that would have helped out. One, put in a definite love interest. That would have definitely gotten the audience more into it. Two, change the time that the movie was released to the general public because is when they released it, I don't remember the exact time, but I saw the clips from it, the trailer from it at the theaters, and I never heard anything more of it after the clip, the trailer was released. So evidently, it must have come out at a time when it must run into some serious competition. Yeah, uh, June of 95, you see, I, I kind of fell for it. Like I said, I've been at Lime all week. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get a chance to really research, see what movies came out versus it in the summer of 95. But, you know, that's always a factor, you know, when you release a movie. Because, like I said, I remember when Ghostbusters 2 got released, they put mm -hmm. it in, it's like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Batman. Or the Batman Returns or something like that. And, oh, God, it just, there were six people in that theater opening night for Ghostbusters 2. The release? Oh no. Okay, McNallage? I won't say anything to this movie. I would not change it. I think. I okay, was going to say that the only reason I think people hate this movie is because they want something to hate, but. Actually, I don't even see why that would be a movie. It's a good movie, I don't see why it would be. Alright. Well, if you were going to remake it, do you, th you have any ideas what you would do to make it a little better? Uh, no, no. Nothing? Okay, so you like it as it is? Yes. Yeah, I'd do as well. Okay. Nightwing? Just bring it up to date. Like, aren't they doing that with a lot of classic movies? Yeah. Um, Ghostbusters, I believe, is getting something redone on... I wouldn't, like... I, I've heard Jura Jurassic Park it might be getting something. Yeah, it's getting a sequel. Yeah, so I don't see why not. Like, they're doing it for every old movie because they don't have any, they've run out of ideas, so why not? Uh, not I'm not saying that new movies are... that they're running out of ideas because there are people that are making some cracking ideas, but... They are people that they are actually going back to the classics, just and bringing them back up to date. Okay. Well, sometimes I sometimes I find that the over the overuse of, of um, updating classics tends to spoil the I spoil the uh, you know the fondness of um, classics really. But I I think if you know if they didn't if they had a different like some extra characters and some you know 
what Freedom said about the, uh, you know, some more stuff from the novel, I think with the opposing team and everything, I think in update graphics and similar style of CGI to that of um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, you know, with the CGI and the monkeys. Yeah. And I yeah, think I they did that really well. You got a point there. Yeah, I agree there. So I, so I think if they brought it into the 21st, you know, in the, in, into and bring it out to the public, I think it might do better than not saying that this was a bad movie because it wasn't, um, but it might do better than it, it, it did. No, I'm skeptical. I think people would own, uh, new producers would only screw with that. Okay. Oh, okay. So no, no remake, huh? No. No remake it? There, there, I think there would be people who, who would like it, but no. I, I don't want to see it. There's too much remakes, reboots, and all of that already. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, that kind of led me in and out of my next question anyway. Uh, so, Nightwing, you think a remake would do well if, we, if they put one out now? Yeah, I think a remake would do well, because, again, I said, pretty much every movie that's coming out is doing pretty well. You know, the Godzilla... I'm not... I, I, I'm going to hold my hands up. I enjoyed the new Godzilla. I prefer it than the one that was set in New York. Um, well, I, really? Yeah, I actually do. I prefer this one. Oh, I found it a bit bland, to be honest. The, the only problem I found with that... I know I'm going off a bit top here, um, but the only problem I found with that one was the, the two extra... whatever they were called. What were they called? The two folk things. Yeah. That's the only problem I found with it. Cause it seemed to like, be more about them than Godzilla. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. All right, so acknowledge, don't remake it. No. Okay. Harry, do you think a remake of this movie would do well now? I don't think a remake would do much good. I think the if you're gonna do, you want to re-release the movie, re-release it sometime when it's got a chance to get a better audience, but. As far as I'm concerned, remaking it is not going to do much of any good. Okay, Philip. Um, I got a feeling if, if they attempted to remake it, to make it, it will get a flack for being for trying to jump on the bandwagon of um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes of, and that sort kind of nature of filming. All right. Oh, one other thing before I move on. Yeah, that's right. One other guy, and it just popped into my head who appeared in this movie, and he was only in this movie for like five minutes. Anybody remember the man at the airport? Yes, I remember the man at the airport, but I don't know who he is. Um, is he, was he the man that was driving the, um, the, the, the cab for the um, explorers? Yep. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Okay, McNollage? No, I just wanted to say that he was wearing some kind of a flower shirt or a multicolored shirt or something like that. Uh, I don't. No, finish it. Go ahead. No, I said I don't know who he is. I was just saying that he was wearing a flower shirt or something. Yeah, okay. the flower that was, shirt. There, okay, that was Joey Pants, Joe Pantoliano. Nope, never heard of him. Did I? Never heard of him. <laughs> the Matrix. Oh, he, he well, played I'm not that. He played Cipher. Ah, okay. Yeah, you see, Joe Pantoliano, he's one of them actors who is literally in God knows how many movies, and yet you never really recognize him or you never really see him, you know. He, he has made quite a few good ones, you know, you know, that where he's the lead. But, you know, when he pops up as a side character, he's, like, everywhere, and he's one of them actors that's in, like, every freaking movie, yet you never really think about it, <laughs> you know. Just like the uh, guy that was talking to the professor at the beginning when he was still trying to get him to convince him to let Amy take him back, take, take Amy back to the wild, that was, uh, I can't remember the name of the actor, he was also in, like, Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> he's also one of the actors that's in, like, every movie, and you never really recognize the actor's name, because he's always playing a small role, you know, here and there. But, yeah, Joe Pantoliano would go on to, yeah, to get major success with the Matrix and Cypher. Okay. okay. So, were there any other parts of this movie you want to bring up? The uh, parts that were bad, or parts that were also good that you want to talk about? Let's sort of fill it. Um, 
I did. I don't know. I mean, I did like the bits where um, Amy was obviously jealous of jealous of the woman on the plane when, when they were on the plane going to the destination and and uh, calling the woman ugly or whether she's ugly. I thought that was quite funny. Ugly, ugly woman. Yeah. pretty gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was glad somebody brought that up. I love those parts too. Ugly woman, gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> Harry. I really have no, as far as I'm concerned, I have no opinion on the movie whatsoever. It's basically, if you're going to do anything with any of the lead characters, I'd say your female lead needs to dress more like a lady and less like a guy. Uh, Acknowledge, were there any other parts, good or bad, you wanted to bring up? Uh, not parts, more aspects. Uh, I think it was uh, something bad that, that I didn't like. Uh, I, I think that uh, the thing with the eye was somewhat stupid because uh, I was expecting it to be painted on a wall or something as a symbol, but it was just an eye on a statue, and I don't see why it would be so important. I oh, know. it was also on the walls inside the city. It was the uh, hieroglyph that was being repeated, as well as on, if you look at I, the walls when they're down inside the tunnels, that eye symbol's on all the walls. I didn't know. So. That's okay, it's just I've seen this movie a bunch of times, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have seen the hieroglyphics, but they looked like uh, like normal hieroglyphics. Not, nothing special about them. Yeah. No, no yellow lights. Or okay, Nightwing. Any part? Any other part of the movie you want to bring up, good or bad, or? Um. Um. Like I thought the volcano erupting was okay because you know I like I like that kind of if there's a volcano in it I do in, in a particular movie or TV I do like them to erupt it's pretty much what a volcano does. Oh, so it, okay. it, it, I, I mean actually, I kind of guess that. Yeah. Well, yeah, go on. Oh no, I'm sorry, my apologies. Oh no, no, you said go on. Now I was going to say that I did. I do like the way how they set up the uh, the ground cracking open and all that. That kind of um, um, uh, 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 televisual art was very well done because you know, for a film that was a very good effect that they had with all the ground cracking open and things crashing everywhere. It was very good, well done. I like that part as well. Okay, so all I can say about oh, go ahead, Michael, please. Uh, I just remembered something. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, them throwing uh, the only diamond they had at the end? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, that that just shows how you know how strong human greed is. It can be little. It can be a lot. I would have cashed it in myself. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, go ahead, please. Yes, in the ending there going back to their normal, boring lives, but if they just kept that diamond, they would have lived happily ever, ever after, so I would have kept it. Yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of agree with you. Like I said, I would have kept it too, because just that would have been a complete double screw over on Joe Don Baker's character. It's like, hey, we did get the diamond, we already cashed it. Matter of fact, I sold it to your competitors. <laughs> <laughs> Collected me a few million dollars. All right, so out of ten, how would you guys rate Congo? Let's start with Philip. Out of ten, okay, I'm gonna give it a generous. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half, because okay, it, it, it was made in that back in '95, and and the effects were quite good for that time. Um, but the story, the story wasn't meaty enough for me. But the the acting was superb. So a seven and a half for me. Okay, Harry. Visual effects an eight, plot line a four. All right, acknowledge. Nine out, nine out of ten easily. And maybe okay. on a, maybe on a bad day I would give it eight out of ten. But it is a really good move. 
Okay. And Nightwing? Uh, I'd say nine. It, uh, for a movie, again, I've never seen and uh, never thought about, or never even heard of, um, I'd, say, I'd say nine, because uh, it, it doesn't deserve all the flack that it gets. Or uh, it's just a shame that, you know, it got all those nominations for the Golden Raspberry Award, which is an interesting name for the award ceremony. <laughs> who would want to go to a negative one? I've never thought about that. Well, who would want to go to a negative one? Okay, now, I, there was a little method to my madness for picking these particular movies. And the reason for being was, okay, I picked Flash Gordon. Well-known movie, but there's a lot of people out there who thought it's too camp, yet at the same time, it's a cult classic, and a lot of people really, really love it. Either, yeah. You know, it was an inc- incredible blockbuster. Then I picked Battle Beyond the Stars. Very people, very few people know about it, and yet it a lot of people. Stuff. Yeah, but a lot, of, but it quintupled its money. It, you know, it they they you know it literally did. Mm-hmm. And then we also had this one, really popular, based off a of Michael Crichton novel, made three times what it cost to make it, yet. Nobody even remembers it. But then the one shining star, and the reason why I picked this one out of all these groups, was Crawl. Here's a movie that had millions and millions and millions of dollars flung at it, had a lot of up-and-coming stars in it, yet... (laughs) In the toilet. True. So that was the reason why I picked these particular movies off the top of my head. There was at least a little method to my madness there. Now, gentlemen... I don't think you need your pads and papers. Because in two weeks' time, you know what I want you to watch. Yes. Star- no, not Storm Warning. Uh, the Sword of Orion. Nope. Next oh, week. two yeah. weeks. Yes, two weeks' time. You know yes. what it is, McNaughton. Deep. Uh, the first episode. Uh, two yes. weeks' time. I what? Deep Breath. I forgot the name. I watched it. Yes, yeah, so Omega Files going back to the episode by episode format. We'll be going back, yeah, two weeks' time. Deep breath there is with Peter Capaldi. Yes. Now, did all of you get a chance to take a look at the leaked opening titles? Yeah. I saw the, the titles that were yes. by someone outside of BBC. It was beautiful. I them. Did you get a chance to see the leaked titles, uh, McNaughton? No, I it didn't. It was beautiful. Can I, can I get a link, maybe? Okay, who is the next one? Right, let me see if I can um, I put it. So I got it. Um, I got it in my computer because it keeps it keeps getting pulled up, put uh, pulled down on the um, main site. So uh, if I can just bring it up. Yes, I know. I know it was leaked, but uh, it was uh, it was brought down by. The yep, it's it's down. It's gone. Yeah. Um, hang on. Let me see if I can do. How can I do this now? Oh, right. If I am. Um, Right, let's see if I can get it into the chat. It might work, it might not. One second. I saw one yesterday, and all I gotta say about it is this. It's BBC does not hire the person who did this this intro. The person who right. did it should be shot. It's in the um chat uh, in the main chat of McKnowledge. So if it, you wanna click on that. It says add this person as a contact to send and receive. Oh, oh, yeah. um you and you have to add Philip. Okay. okay. For those folks who've seen the leaked titles, let's start with Philip. What do you think of them? I thought it. Well, obviously, we've all known for a while that they they might use that kind of element of title sequence. And I, you know, for what I saw, I found it, it it's a it's a lot better than what I ex- what I was expecting. And it's a shame that the BBC cannot make titles like that. They have to refer to a fan made effort to get that. It's quite good. It's brilliant. Well, yeah, it's based off his work, but it's almost dead on, isn't it? Yeah, very dead on. Okay, Harry? I saw it. All I gotta say is this. If the BBC does not hire the person who came up with this homemade stuff to do new title sequences in the future, whoever's had visual effects in the BBC should be fired. Okay. Nightwing, you've seen him? Hello? Yeah, have you seen the leaked titles? 
Sorry, I um, had to do something. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I did. What did you, you make of them? Exactly how I thought they would be when I saw that video of that guy, you know, that guy who made his own. Oh, yeah, I think that was Billy Hanshaw, if I remember right. Something along that That after guy, me. that guy is so talented. And I agree, I've agreed with, was it you, Harry, that said that they should hire him? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, they should hire this, this kid and have him... This person have him take over doing the title sequences for the BBC because if they don't, somebody has got a, a serious problem because this, it, those visual effects were amazing. It does sound like the, the theme is slightly changed, like as in like the sound. It's still like the same tune, it just sounds different, if you get what yeah, I mean. It's been tweaked a little bit, yeah. It's more uh, tuba. Like yeah, I like it too. Really, I'm, I'm, I know this is because it was fil you know, filmed in the cinema or wherever it was. But the woman, like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. Like, <sighs> <laughs> that really, uh, that really just. I know, but the, the title sequence is amazing. I'm really looking forward to watching it, like, in on on TV without any of that glare. And it, without that woman going, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you get when you take a cam copy of something. It does happen. Yeah. At least it's better than the one cam copy somebody, well, I got through certain means, where halfway through the movie, the guy threatens to beat up the dude next to him for making too much noise. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yep. He, yeah, he threatened to, uh, shall we say, meet him outside the theater and do physical bodily harm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, matter of fact, um, this this person even has, if you, all right, for those who have seen the league scripts, I know Harry has them. Um, he, he's, they did give him credit in the titles for the end titles. It's, yeah. Yeah, Woo! it's based off this person's work. So he, yeah, his name is going to be in the titles of Doctor Who this series. Oh, um, another thing, sorry, can I just pick up on the title sequence? Oh, please, go ahead. Um, instead of using Capaldi's full face, they've got the angry eyebrows instead. Oh, yeah, I love that bit. <laughs> the angry eyebrows is going to be a thing, like, until Capaldi regenerates, which hopefully is not for, like, a while. I, no. I think a lot of it stems from when we saw that little bit they added of him in the eighth anniversary special. That was kind of it's kind of like whoa, scary. Yeah, because yeah, at that time they didn't have a costume or anything for him, so that's all they showed was his eyebrows, and I think that's what caused it to take off. Capaldi's eyebrows have been everywhere. I think now. It should be a meme. There's going to be definitely be a meme somewhere like the angry eyebrows of space. There's, there's quite a space. few done up already, actually. Is there's there? quite a few memes. Yeah, there's quite a lot knocking around. You could you could already tell that I'm going to be like mm. with Paldi. Um, me and Phil and Harry picked up on this yesterday when we were talking. I said that I, we, I was listening to the radio broadcast uh, in Wales. And, oh my God, he's, I don't know, he, he, he sounds so committed to this. Obviously, we know this by now, but he does seem extremely happy and enjoying himself and it, I don't know at least they're letting him have his full Scottish accent yeah matter of fact they do make a quite a bit to play that in and like I know Harry's gonna enjoy it when he hears it the, that whole Scottish thing they really play on it. it it's really well done too matter of fact here's a tiny little line spoiler for you they're attack eyebrows you can take bottle caps with them take bottle caps off with them <laughs> <laughs> I like it's it. It's like Wills of Gummidge. It's like Wills of Gummidge. He has a head or something for every occasion. It probably has eyebrows for every occasion. Okay, McNally, you back with us? Yes, is it possible that Moffat is making fun of uh, Capaldi's eyebrows because he missed the chance to make fun of Smith for his lack of eyebrows? <laughs> I didn't even think of yeah. that. <laughs> Okay, um, did you get a chance to take a look at the titles yet, or? Yeah, he, he just, um, he just, um, l uh, linked me up. I'll you guys a sec, I gotta, uh, I wanna watch him, I don't wanna interrupt the podcast while I'm watching it. Um, okay. Paul, uh, 
Uh, mute your mic, Harry. Mute my mic while I'm watching it. Oh, that might be a good idea. All right, what was that, Nightwing? I just said that might be a good idea, Harry, to mute your mic. Okay. So we're... yeah, uh, Magnus, have you been able to? Can you can you now download the um the clip? No, I can't. Right. Try. Oh, because you because okay, I'm you're now on my thing. I'm, let me see if I can drag it onto your um. Hang on, I'll try it this way around. Right, okay, um... that it doesn't really matter. I'll I'll watch it uh, after the Omega files okay. anyway. Yeah, you can watch it later on, and you know if you if you yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Okay. In two weeks' time, you're going to get to see them in their full glory. Hmm. Okay, guys. Uh, deep breath. World tour. Uh, anything you want to bring up about that, um, Sir Philip? Um, not really. I mean, um, I'm glad. I mean, they must be absolutely shattered. Having to um, just finish wrapping up on the series and then off on these on these um, premieres and then the world tour, I feel sorry for poor old Capaldi. Poor man. Yeah, how many cities in twelve days? That's gonna be fun. I know. It's like wow. Five or six. Okay, that's definitely the same one I saw yesterday. All right. Now here's the big one. And I was going to bring up the article on their site, but unfortunately, uh, Doctor Who TV is down again today. Probably overloaded. Moffat said no master. I know, the little wanker. Ah. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Moffat's ah. tapping out both sides of his mouth. Okay. Well, let's start with Philip. You think he's lying, or do you think the master is done? I think he's lying. Of course he's lying. Moffat uh, lies. Harry? Moffat's lying through his teeth, he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, he's just blowing smoke trying to into, keep people away from what he's really got planned. Okay, McNollage? Of course he's lying, he's Moffat. Of course he's lying, he's Moffat. Don't trust Moffat, he's lying. Okay, so you agree, uh, Moffat's lying, you think, come on, it's like, come on, it's the Master. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to say who I think the Master is, because I know Phil no. will kill you. I'll kill you if you carry on saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Like I said, it's just fan speculation. I don't, I say, I'm missing being the Master, come on. That was, that was... Okay, guys, well, we've talked about the movie, we've talked a little bit about Doctor Who. I'm gonna... can, I, can I just bring up the fact that... Um... Um, Gemma Coleman's is is slated for being in the in the Christmas episode. Well, does that does that necessarily mean that she's in next? She's 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 chalked up for next year as well. That's that's all speculation at this point. We do know she's going to be in the Christmas special, but will she be departing? We're still not sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, anything else anyone wants to bring up, Doctor E. Wise? Um, the little. The clips that we've seen in the um, Capaldi interview, uh, we see clips. Uh, we see a little bit more clips of him in the show uh, from Into the Dalek, and um, I'm kind of liking what I've seen there. The little new yes. clips, right. pretty cool. Yeah. And we can, we can now actually imagine him as as the Doctor once we saw a scene with him. Uh, he, she's my uh, carer. Oh wait, can I see it? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. Um, she, uh, she's my um, carer. Yep. So I don't have to. So I don't have to. She's yeah. here, so I don't have to. I, that really right there shows you which direction they're going here with the doctor. He's not going to be the same kissy face, huggy bear guy. He's, he's definitely grown up a bit. Yes, and, I think he's still alien like very alien like the 11th Doctor was, but he has that uh, attitude towards humans where, uh, where he doesn't trust them very much like the first Doctor. Also, I heard part of it's going to be because of his experience living on Tremzalor. Because he, right. really, yeah, he spent hundreds of years there and everyone else is living and dying around him, and that's what caused his bit of detachment. Yeah. Yes. They say no. And also, sorry. And it would also explain why he's being arrogant because uh, 
because I mean after seeing people die what like, like flies around him he must feel like an immortal like a god it, especially when he got another set of regenerate regeneration I think that okay. would make anyone arrogant all right now you what do you want to say I just said that Matt wasn't, Matt, at the end of it, Matt's doctor wasn't actually that arrogant, so it does look like it's post-traumatic stress. You know, after the regeneration, he's, he's carried on with the, having, it looks like Matt's managed, you know, the doctor's managed to keep it up for so long with the stress, and it's all coming out now with Capaldi's doctor. Could that be, could that be something to do with, like, similar to that with, with Eccleston? Well, we, with we, have, his we have to, um... We have to also understand that with each regeneration, there's a different personality anyway, with each doctor. Yeah. So saying, saying that, it, the, the the personality we've got from uh, this doctor is reflected on Capaldi in some way. Like, w would you say that? Hmm. Um. Yeah, I suppose. I, well, I'm not going to say no. I suppose it is. Yeah, you're right. I I I would agree with that to a certain level. Yeah. Because I think each doctor brings their own personality. I think what they do, like, I don't think they give them a set personality. I think they figure out what their personality is like beforehand and then write it into the episodes. Do you think that happens as well? Or... Well, yeah. it goes, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you because of uh, a lot of the fourth doctor was Tom Baker. Even he admits it now, years later, that it was pretty much just him being the doctor. And. So I think they do sit down and decide which direction they're going to go. Um, I think with like Sylvester McCoy, what had happened was the John, you know, John Nathan Turner wanted him to go one way, but Sylvester wanted him to go another. At least that's the gist I get. I, I think the actor does have a lot to say about that character when they're playing. Yeah, but it does look like Capaldi's actually putting his foot down for once. Um, that's it. I think we've said this a million times, but it does look like, and I'm happy about that. I am too. Especially considering that. When Peter Davison was playing the Doctor, he and J&T came up with the idea of trying to come across as an older man in a young man's body. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, it did work a bit, but like I said, there, there, you know, but you can see there's a lot of Peter Davison in that Doctor. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else before I bring us to a close? Okay, I think we've gone the gambit here. Okay, let's go around and get the party departures and farewells and final thoughts from everyone. Let's start with Nightwing. Angry eyebrows. Angry eyebrows. <laughs> okay, McNowledge. New series in just two weeks. I'm excited. I'm glad I was here to discuss this great movie. What the hell to say? Goodbye. All right. Harry? Looking forward to Capaldi's debut in two weeks. All right. What else do you want to say? I thought someone else popped in on you. Okay, Philip? Um, a, a very good uh, podcast tonight. And in the words of Colin Baker, for Capaldi, I am a doctor, whether you like it or not. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I'm going to have myself and the rest of the panel here on the Omega Files. Everyone else, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, next week's Omega Files will be the Sword of Orion, and due to work restrictions, I will not be putting that one up or recording it until Sunday, but we're going to try to have it out Sunday evening at the latest so that you folks can listen to it. So take care, Tata, until next time, have a good one. <laughs>